I can't believe they didn't do ads that say when Irish rise are smiling. Today I'm going to review Powers 100% Rye Irish Whiskey. Welcome to Four Leaf Whiskey. This one is the very latest from Powers Distillery. This is Powers 100% Irish Rye, Irish Whiskey. So my first question on this, is this really 100% Irish Rye? The answer is yes, it actually is. Uh, Powers and Irish Distillers had the crops commissioned to be planted at the Cooney Furlong Farm in County Wexford, specifically to be grown to make this whiskey. Carol Quinn, the archivist at Irish Distillers, uh, held Powers to some research into 19th century, 20th century mash bills. There was a lot of trial of different recipes, and this was the final recipe that they came up with. This is currently available in the U.S. We actually got this one before Ireland did. This is 43.2% ABV. This is finished in American oak. They used a combination of, of some virgin oak, some ex-first fill bourbon casks, some refill bourbon casks. They said they added the, uh, the American oak because they liked the sweetness of it. They thought that would counteract and balance out the rye spice uh, quite nicely. This one is still making its way across the U.S. Just landed here in Ohio. Typically, a lot of Irish whiskey releases, they land in the ports of New Jersey and kind of make their way. You usually see them in Jersey, New England first, and they make their way west. Not always, but you typically see that pattern with Irish whiskey. So on the nose, this one is a little sweeter. I'm getting, honestly, the first note I get isn't something that typically you get with Irish whiskey, and that's banana. I'm getting like a kind of fresh banana on the nose. There's some vanilla, a little bit of citrus, an orange. The rye is not coming through in the nose as much as you would think. Honestly, the fruit notes from the Irish whiskey come through the most, more of the, the orange and the banana than anything. I get a little bit of a hint of ginger at the end of that too. So on the palate, I'm getting ginger is the first thing I get. Um, I like sugary, like a candy ginger. And then still getting a little bit of banana. Some apple, vanilla. Um, it's, it's not really as spicy as you would think from a rye. This one almost reminds me of banana bread. Because I'm getting a little bit of, uh, right at the end, a little bit of a clove, a spice. It's not really peppery. I'm getting it more like a, like a baking spice, more like a clove. But I'm definitely getting banana, starting to get some cereal notes in there. So it does remind me a bit of banana bread. This is supposedly the first 100% Irish rye whiskey of 100% Irish rye. So how does this stack up to other Irish rye whiskey? So I pulled out another couple bottles that I have that also have a heavy rye mash bill. Um, full transparency, honestly, the one that would come closest to the Powers Irish Rye is the Kaloa and Capuchin Charity Bottle. It was intended to be 100% rye. Um, unfortunately, they called it the Paddle Breaker because they broke three paddles making it. So they tossed in some peated malted barley. So that one is not available retail anywhere. You had to actually turn it to the charity. Wonderful cause to get the bottle. So I'm not going to include that one. These are bottles that are still available for purchase. Um, I start over here with the one that's probably the more well-known, which is the Kilbegan Small Batch Rye Irish Whiskey. And the one that's a little lesser known, but is honestly wonderful, and that is the Short Cross Rye and Malt Irish Whiskey. It almost didn't include this one um, because it is cast strength at 66%, but it, it's a rye, it's a heavy rye. So I'm going to see how the Powers Rye stands up to these two. So first we're going to try the Kilbegan. On the nose, they're a bit different. The Kelbegan is, where is it out here? 43%, so the ABV is very, very similar. The Kelbegan is much fruitier on the nose. So the one thing that Kelbegan has on the nose that the Powers does not, the Powers is more banana and more orange on the nose. The Kelbegan is more orchard. So it's more a fresh red apple, fresh pear. Uh, 
on the palate, you get some of the rye spice, but it is, it's pears. It's a lot of fresh pears. Um, this is not 100% rye mash bill. Um, I'm not actually sure without doing some research what the mash bill is on this, um, what the percentage of rye is on this. It was over 5%. Um, they could not call this a single pot still whiskey because the rye percentage was over, over the minimum amount allowed. Um, but you do get the rye spice on there. It's just, it's not nearly as prevalent as it is on the powers. The Kelbegan, it's more of kind of just a, a hint of it at the end. A little bit of that, that clove, that black pepper at the end, but it's mostly orchard fruit. So now we'll compare it to the Short Cross Ryan Malt. So right on the nose, you can tell a difference. Uh, the Short Cross is much more malty, much more molasses, kind of like a maple syrup, brown sugar. Not really getting as much of the rye spice on the nose with the Short Cross. The palette, you definitely do. Um, the palette on this one, it's kind of like a molasses or like, it, it definitely does actually remind me of molasses, molasses or um, like a treacle, like a burnt brown sugar. And then you get a little bit of the minty notes, but mostly you get the rye spice at the end. You're getting kind of a clove, um, a little bit of a ginger, a lot of bready notes in this one. Um, the malt is definitely coming through really nicely in this one. Going back to the powers, I still do get the banana actually a little more and ironically the bready notes a little more even though the short cross um has the malt and the powers doesn't but it definitely reminds me of, of a, like a banana bread so final thoughts on powers 100 percent rye irish whiskey um i'm going to lead with a word you're going to hear a lot when people are describing this irish rye whiskey it's interesting and there, it's really the perfect word for it because there, there isn't really one that's exactly like it. It's different notes than you typically get with Irish. Um, you're going to get more banana and more ginger on this one. You're definitely going to get some of the rye spice. It's going to be vastly different than American rye. I think this one is a good one for people who don't like rye or just getting introduced to rye. Looking at you, Whiskey Mountains. You might, you might actually like this one. This one is, it, it's still got those shortbread cookie notes that, it, or as I kind of call it with this one, it's more like banana bread. The notes you typically get with Irish whiskey. So you're going to see a lot more whiskeys like this uh, in 2023 and moving forward. You'll notice on the bottle, it does not say blended, doesn't say single pot still, doesn't say single grain, doesn't say single malt. This is what is referred to as a mixed mash bill Irish whiskey. Uh, they, they don't have a defined category. And I think distillers have shied away from those in the past. And this year, they're really embracing it because it allows them so much more variety and, and such broader range that they could get into with rye, with wheat, with oats. Um, and you're going to see a lot more of this. So the retail price on this one is roughly about $27 to $32. It's only a dollar more than Powers Gold Label. That is intentional. They they intended for the, the MSRP to be priced at that. It's an interesting departure from the typical standard Irish whiskey. At this price point, uh, I do think it is definitely worth a look. I think if you enjoyed the uh, Kilbeg and Small Batch Rye Irish whiskey, I think you're going to like this one as well. Um, I think if you're not a fan of those super strong rye notes, if you want something a little more subtle, I think you're going to like this one. It's a perfect marker of the direction the Irish whiskey is headed. And at this price point, I think it would be really good for cocktails as well. You can enjoy this in cocktails or neat pour. I'm looking forward to making a hot toddy of this one. I could see this being good in old fashions. And it's green. Come on, it's 30 days to St. Patrick's Day. It's a green bottle. So if you've tried this one, please comment below and let me know. Please like and subscribe. And I'm going to try to get a lot more content out as our favorite holiday of the year is fast approaching. Slotcha.